Penn State gets another commitment in the class of 2023 as they begin their work for the next group of future Penn State Nittany Lions. And when that happens, I'm here to tell you what the players like, what they do well, and what they need to work on. I'm your host at T. Frank's Film Room, Thomas Frank Carr. Make sure you subscribe on our YouTube channel, the exclusive home of T. Frank's Film Room. If you listen to our podcast, maybe the BWI Daily Edition or the recruiting podcast with Greg Pickle and with Ryan Snyder. Those, of course, available in audio versions, the only place you get this information because it's it's the film room. You kind of need video. Only get it on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe, hit the notification button so you don't miss another one of these because Penn State uh, is doing very well in the class of 2023. And let's meet our next player in that class. That would be three-star tight end from Exeter Township, Joey Schlaffer. Schlaffer, if you've been following along, he is the half-brother of... Uh, former former Penn State center Michael Mennett and uh, is a good player in his own right as a younger brother. I won't be saying that forever because he's going to make a name for himself at some point in the future. But Joey Schlaffer, a three-star tight end, 6'5 and a half, nearly 6'6, about 210 pounds and by presumably growing based on his film. So what makes him special? What makes him a target for the Penn State Nittany Lions that have been going after four and five-star tight ends? Guys with national recruiting uh, ties. Is it just the family uh, relationship between uh, you know his family and Joey and Joey in the university, who's known the Nittany Lions staff for quite some time now, or is it his own merit? Well, if you know the Penn State coaching staff, he wouldn't be getting an offer just because he's a family member. So let's dive into the skills that make him a Penn State commit. And the first thing, if we're talking about Penn State tight ends, you guessed it, he's a good athlete. Again, 6'5", 210, growing at the position, and good physical abilities, good speed and movement off the line. I like his ability to turn for a tall player. I didn't think that was going to be the case, and it wasn't early on. He got much better at stuff like this throughout the season and really has grown into his body. A little bit of a false to start here, but you like the twitchiness, the explosiveness to set things up, and then the turn at the top of the route. He's really improved the top of his routes. And then just little things here like good vertical leaping ability, good ability to catch the ball at the apex, and then body control in space. That's a heck of a play on fourth and 22, no less, in that situation. So from a physical standpoint, he's the receiver that everyone is expecting from a Penn State tight end. Good movement skills, his 40 times somewhere uh, around 4'7", I'd say probably a little bit uh, south of that in the high 4'6s, but somewhere in that general area, and has uh, good movement skills, good fluidity throughout his body for a tall player, and we'll get to that in a little bit because I think that will provide some hope when it comes to some of the other aspects of his game in just a little bit, but it's not just those skills because from a physical perspective, I don't know that he turns super well. I don't know that his agility numbers will come back as anything special, but it's his abilities at the position that make up for that. He does have enough skills that makes him a threat to run those routes. And I want to show you these receiving skills because they're, they're more advanced than I was expecting. Uh, I thought he was a bit of a raw player the first time I saw him, but just watch this little head fake, that little indecision at the top. That gets him open against a guy that had deep coverage and about four or five yards of cushion. That's Nick Singleton. He singled up on Penn State's all-world running back and uh, commit in the class of 2022. He gets the inside slant on him and is able to break a tackle and get downfield. Watch the ability here, the little shake, the toe drag, the, the movement at the top of the route. He's very good at that. And then he's going to play tight end. So does he run tight end routes? Yep. Yes, he does. Just a quick flat route. Get up field with a ball in his hands. Looks it in. Those routine plays, you got to see those on film. And then, of course, the poppiness to get in and out of the routes, but also the ability to run those routes and know how to set them up. Watch here. Just this subtle fake at the top of the route. Gets the corner to commit. Then he goes up and gets the ball. I'd like to see him high point the ball a little bit more. I think sometimes he's waiting for the ball. But a little quick underhanded sort of thing here where he pushes off legally, or at least as legally as you can, and then gets open, creating separation. And this one, just a scramble drill. Find the open hole. Get the touchdown. That's the sort of awareness you want to see in a receiver who is going to be doing that a lot in the red zone. So those are all really good early skills for Joey Schlaffer as a guy who's building that receiver uh, positional ability. And the good news is, as you saw there, in the Exeter Township offense, he spends a good number of reps at both true tight end in line with his hand in the dirt 
and out wide. So he truly splits between the two positions. And that, I think, is going to be a big benefit for him going forward because he shows some good run-blocking ability. And I mentioned one of those key aspects of his receiving, I think, shows up in his blocking skills. And it's something I haven't seen from a lot of Penn State tight ends that play receiver at the high school level. And it's it's decent run blocking technique. Now, again, being the half brother of Michael Bennett, maybe he has some uh, some early tips in here, but you see the way he comes off the ball right there. I love the ability to fire out low for a guy who's 6'6". His pads come forward, not up. And when he can run his feet and get out and get contact, makes good plays. Now that's a double team with a lineman, but still his ability to block in space, seal off, good technical blocker, quick hips, and good flexibility. Those are all things that when you are a blocker, low man wins, all that stuff. And you see here, his ability to move bigger players when he has the opportunity to, he takes advantage of that. So those are all good skills when it comes to run blocking. I think those are, are legitimately serious building blocks of a guy that could be a good blocker in the future. Because again, he's doing it at the high school level at 210 pounds. I don't want to say he's moonlighting as a tight end because he does spend a, almost a full game at tight end. So those skills are developing and they are pretty good early on as far as the technical ability to slip inside and create holes, even if it is just with giving the running back a good color to run towards, you know, a friendly color so that he can squeeze through a gap, even if he's not widening said gap. But, because there's always a but with a Penn State tight end, right, when it comes to blocking, uh, he's 210 pounds. So the ability to actually move people off the ball, especially when facing an actual uh, defensive end or somebody with strength and power, you see here he can just be overmatched at times. And the ability to drive block, the power, this guy's just waiting to get off the block for the most part. So he's going to get in people's way. He's going to give a good effort, I think, but I don't know that this is going to be any sort of difference-making ability on his part, at least early on, or until he gets up to that size that he needs to at 245, 250 pounds. The question will become, eventually, does he have the ability to get to that size? Because those numbers, being 250, you know, that's that's sort of where you want to be. That's the sweet spot for a tight end of big and physical for a frame his size, well filled out, and with the, the lower body strength and the power necessary to move people. That's critical. He needs to be able to get there, and that will determine, I think, a lot of his his ceiling as an overall football player because the receiving skills, the returns early are so good right now, um, barring having freak physical skills, like being able to run a 4-4 or having insane leaping ability. None of those things are present, but as far as a, a quality tight end prospect, he's got all of those and a big frame that he's he's currently filling out. He's gotten bigger, and he's got a good physique. He just needs to add more muscle, and that will increase speed. That will increase his explosiveness, and as long as he maintains his flexibility throughout that training process, he'll be able to be a little more agile and move smoothly through his routes the same way while gaining that strength in order to be a difference maker as a blocker. And with that low pad level, with that, with the ability to come out low and win the point of attack with leverage, as long as the strength is there, he has the ability. But there's one final ingredient missing in a run blocker, and that is tenacity. How physical is he? What is his, his desire to win at the point of attack? And I had to go back and watch some other tight ends to kind of remind myself of what that looks like, especially on the on the high school level. And I, I took a look at Pat Fryermuth as a guy who came in as a, as a ready-made blocker at the college level from high school. And Pat Fryermuth was as big as he was when he was a senior, when he was a senior in high school. So he had this ability of, I'm bigger than you, I know it, and I'm going to enforce my will. Joey doesn't have that yet. Again, he's 210 pounds. He's still growing into this but the mentality has to grow as well. Again, here he is against Nick Singleton and Governor Mifflin. He'll go out and he'll make the hit, so he's not afraid of contact. But here, he's trying to set the edge. He sets the edge. Does he compress the gap? Not really. Again, here he is. He's supposed to set the edge, turn the play back inside. Done. 
but it's not like he is a guy that on his film looks like he loves contact or he's going to hit people. Now this one against Bo Perbula to start the season in Central York, this is a fourth down and one. He's got to make this play and he does. That ended up not being a conversion for uh, for Perbula and for Central York. So there is good si- there are good signs on film of his willingness to mix it up and be physical. The question then becomes, does it ever turn into a strength? Does he ever become one of those guys that, ooh, I don't want to get hit by Joey Schlaffer, especially as a, as a run blocker. That's going to be whether or not he becomes a complete tight end or another good receiver that doesn't hurt you in the run game. And, and that's really the biggest question mark about Schlaffer and his three-star ranking versus a four-star ranking versus whatever. The potential, as always, with this tight end and Penn State and what they look for the frame, room to grow, good genetics. His brother was was a, you know, maybe an undersized lineman, but still a giant human for the rest of us. And on a bigger frame, you imagine the same thing can happen. So lots of like with a high upside three-star in Joey Schlaffer, the tight end out of Exeter Township. That'll do it for today for T. Frank's Film Room. Make sure you subscribe wherever you get uh, your podcast to the BWI Daily Edition and, of course, to our other shows, but especially Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit notification buttons so you don't miss T. Frank's Film Room.